Good morning, everyone. It's Christmas. Yay. I hope you all have had a lovely morning so far. Uh, who was up before 7 a.m.? Me, me. I hope you let your parents sleep this afternoon. They will need it. Put on a good film, have a little nap. They'll be fine. So, here we are, Christmas Day. Very, very strange to not see you all sitting in front of me with your Christmas jumpers and your little presents. And But that's just the way it is this year. I'm sure that you are all excited to still be in your pyjamas and not had to get dressed for church. That is my most excitable part of the day this year that I get to stay in my Christmas onesie all year. It's amazing. All day. All day. <laughs> Anyway, welcome. This is Christchurch Bushmead. We are celebrating Christmas Day and we are here. Now we are going to sing a Christmas carol. This one is one of my favourites from when I was a tiny, tiny, tiny child. We are going to have some actions. I will be over there, magically, doing some actions. And we are going to sing along. So up you get, off your sofas, off your bean bags, out of bed maybe, and join along. So my favourite part, one of the favourite parts, Christmas Day service, is everyone getting to show us what they got for Christmas Day. Now I've bought a lot of presents with me along the years. I've had little snow globes, I've had sticky men that once we got stuck to the ceiling, don't do that in church, no, no. We've had all sorts, we've had talking dinosaurs, we've had cuddly cats. We've had the helicopters, the year of the helicopters, where everyone's radio helicopters were on the same frequency and then they were going mad. It was just a little bit weird. So this year, because you're not all here, how about you put in the comments what you have got? Maybe even record a little video greeting for us of what you have and send it to us at church and then we can have a look and we can put it all together and we can share that. I don't know the magic, but we'll somehow, somehow weirdly do it. So now I'm going to introduce you to Dean, who is going to do our reading for us. And then the Reverend Tim is going to come and give us a little bit of a Christmas message. 
So settle down, sit nice and quietly, put your listening ears on, and let's listen to what Tim has to say about the Christmas message. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor a, a human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, and the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Well, happy Christmas, everyone. Thanks, Emily, for uh, leading us today. Um, I hope you're all really excited with the presents that you've got. Um, can you believe it's Christmas once again? It comes around very quickly, doesn't it? Well, Christmas is a lot of fun. It's full of festivity and celebrations normally. It's full of lots of food. It's full of nativities, copious lots and lots amounts of chocolate, all sorts of different things. But of course, this year is all very different and a bit strange, but we can still celebrate that Jesus came to live among us as a baby. Now, I wonder how many of you had a Christmas stocking this year? This is actually Amanda's, my wife, and uh, I've, I've borrowed it. Um, I think she's hopeful that it's going to be full of presents, but I'm not sure it will be completely full. Now, I wonder, what do you know what the most popular thing is to get in a Christmas stocking? I'm going to give you a clue, and parents, if you've been on Facebook this week, you'll know the answer to this, because the co-op had run out. <laughs> Do you know what it is? It is. I'm going to dig right into my, the bottom of this stocking. I hope it's not a lump of coal. I hope I've been good enough. <laughs> it is a chocolate orange. Now, I don't know about you, but I really, really like chocolate oranges. Apparently, there's 20 segments of chocolate deliciousness in these. And did you know that one in every 10 stockings has one of these in, which means about 9 million UK households enjoy them each year. 44 million are sold worldwide. That's probably why, nationwide even. That's probably why I couldn't get one at the co-op when I really needed one. It's actually, I like chocolate oranges because when I eat it, I think it's good for me because it's an orange. I just forget the fact there's about 800 calories in it, but that's another thing. So did you know that the other thing about these is that you'd start out as a chocolate apple. In 1926 all the way to 1954. And then in, but in 1932, that's when these were created. And the whack it and unwrap it was, bought, was, was born. You might remember that, parents, when they used to say on the top, whack it and unwrap. I also like these things for another reason, though. Because these actually help us think about the fundamental meaning of Christmas. Because as nice as all the stuff is, the food, the family, the presents, the eating, the drinking, there is actually that deeper meaning to our celebrations. As I said at the start, Jesus comes as a baby. So I want you to think of this chocolate orange as representing Jesus. First thing you do when you take a chocolate orange off a shelf is the box. It's quite a nice box, isn't it? It's nice and blue. Blue's my favourite colour. And it's shiny. And it's a bit like a house for the chocolate orange. Of Christmas, we of course think of Jesus. 
He did have, he does have a birthday which we celebrate on Christmas Day. We'll be singing about that later. But it wasn't the day he began to exist. Because as we heard in our Bible reading that Dean read for us, it says, in the beginning, the word, that's Jesus, already existed. He was with God and he was God. He existed in the beginning with God and God created everything through him. Jesus was willing to leave his heavenly home and come down to earth as a baby. And in some ways, if we look at this box, you can see there's a window in it to see what's inside. It's our chocolate orange. And in the Old Testament, before Jesus came, people could glimpse God in all kinds of ways, but they couldn't actually see him fully. But what I'm going to do is take this orange out of the box. Because Jesus left his home in heaven to come and be with us so that we could see God fully. And now we can see our orange fully too. Do you want to know what God is like? Well, we look at Jesus, who was born in a stable this last night. The other thing about the chocolate orange is it has this nice shiny wrapper around it. It's almost jewel-like shiny orange wrapper, which I think is pretty flashy, actually. It's really nice, isn't it? And some might think about God that way. The Bible talks about God living in unapproachable light and coming on clouds of glory. And a number of people have had visions of Jesus where Jesus has spoken to them. And all that is correct. God does come with light and he comes and speaks to us. But at Christmas, what we celebrate today, God shows us a different side. When Jesus came to earth, he could have come on the clouds he could have come with all sorts of light he could have come with all the angels he could have come as a prince or a king but Jesus takes off all of that splendor and comes in a humble way as a baby born in a stable to unimportant parents in the world's eyes Jesus was born in obscurity God chose to be born in a humble way Christmas is about the incarnation, which is a fancy word, which actually means that Jesus came into the world as a human. He was fully divine and fully human. Seems crazy, doesn't it? That was one of the first sacrifices Jesus made for us when he came to earth and left his heavenly home. What about the world that Jesus came into? When we look around the world or look at our orange to represent the world, like we do at Christingle, we can see the joy. Do we see joy and contentment and fulfillment? At the moment, we don't. We just see darkness and fear because of this terrible virus. We've all ended up distanced from God. We've each dug ourselves a hole. You know, we've got a shovel. We've dug a big hole because the Bible talks about sin. And that's what we do when we do things that aren't very nice and perhaps do things to people that we shouldn't do. Perhaps we've said the wrong word, or, you know, we've, we've called them names. The consequence of what the Bible calls sin is that we get cut off from God. We get stuck and we can't get ourselves out. But God knows that and he loves us. Jesus saw that hole that we dug ourselves. And do you know what he did? He jumps in to pull us out because he takes the fall for us. We talk a lot about Jesus as the baby, but he grows into a man to take the fall for us at Easter. That's what he does when he dies on the cross. Jesus is broken for us, just as my chocolate orange is probably now broken when I threw it on the floor. But it's through that act that we're able to share with Jesus and to know him. And what I can do now is open my chocolate orange and smell that wonderful chocolate oranginess. And I really want to eat it. Because the consequence of Jesus coming as a baby, dying for us, and of course rising again, is very sweet because it means that we can have a relationship with God. I talk to him every day. Maybe you do. When we pray, we talk to Jesus. We can share in that forgiveness and the freedom that he gave us by dying on the cross. 
Now, this is a bit mean, because normally I would want to share this out with everybody, but there's nobody else around that I can share it with. I would have given you a piece in the building. But, the, but that's the thing, because this chocolate orange is now in lots of different pieces from when I broke it. And that's one of the things. It's the sweetness of God's love that we can, now, we can share. I can share my chocolate orange. We can share the love of God with others. And we do that in church through so many different ways. We love one another. We pray for one another. We, go, we walk with people as they go through difficult times. Jesus came as a baby at Christmas so that we can have a relationship with him. That's the true meaning of Christmas. He comes to bring us hope and he comes to bring us joy. So if you've got a chocolate orange this Christmas in your stocking, remember as you unwrap it, as you break it, and if you're that way inclined, you share it, we can remember that Jesus left his heavenly home to come and dwell among us as a baby. He was broken for our sake in order that everyone could share in his love and eternal life. To remember the purpose that he gives our lives is to bring good news to others. So may you share the good news of Jesus this Christmas and always. Happy Christmas, everybody. God bless. Amen. Normally at our Christmas service, we would have a basket available for donations. As we are online only, obviously we're unable to do that. If you would like to contribute to the mission and ministry of the church, uh, please follow the link that's on your screen now, which is tinyurl.com forward slash ccb donate. That's tinyurl.com forward slash ccb donate. Or if you've got a mobile device handy, you can scan the QR code and that'll take you through to the page as well. Just thank you in advance for any donations you feel able to make to support the mission and ministry of the church. Thank you so much, Tim, for that message. It is so important to remember to share, much like God shared his love with us. Yeah, Tim, are you going to share at all? No. I'm sure if it wasn't for COVID, he might maybe share me like a little, little bit. Never mind. So don't forget to share your chocolate this Christmas. And now Julia is going to bring us some prayers. So remember our praying hands and we close our eyes so that we can really concentrate on what's being said. And at the end, we're going to do a big Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We want to thank you for the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for what you have done for us in this strange and different 2020. Father, we ask you to be with the families of Wishmi during this time. Show them that you are the light of the world. We ask to be with those who are suffering with illness in our community. I ask you to put your healing hands over them now and relieve their pain. Lord, hold in your hearts the families and people who are on their own this Christmas, those who are vulnerable and those that are lonely. We ask you to wrap your loving arms around them today and give them your comfort that they need. We ask you to protect the key workers within our community who are working over this Christmas period. We also want to thank those who have worked tirelessly during these uncertain times as well. We want to thank you for Tim and Amanda for this past year. We want to give thanks for their obedience to you and their, de their dedication to our community. As we reflect on the Christmas story, may we be filled with the wonders of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels and the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the wise men and the peace of Christ as we go into the new season and new year. May we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Christmas is
it's Christmas, it's Christmas once again. The birthday of Jesus, born in Bethlehem. Christmas, it's Christmas, it's Christmas once again. The birthday of Jesus, born in Bethlehem. The Lord who was a tiny baby. It grew up and existed long before the birth. He laid aside his heavenly glory to be Jesus, Saviour. so much for joining us today um, I hope you have a great Christmas and remember don't be like me share your chocolate with your family I hope you have a really good day despite the difficult circumstances that we find ourselves in thank you for joining us and I want to want to thank uh, Emily uh, Chris Julia Dean and Josh for all of their work in making this service happen and I want to thank you too for joining us as well so I'm just going to pray for God's blessing on us as we end so may the joy of the angels the eagerness of the shepherds the perseverance of the wise men the obedience of Mary and Joseph and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always amen so have a wonderful peaceful and blessed Christmas and we look forward to seeing you soon bye bye